Instagram, did you hear that? I hope you heard that. Oh, Hello, yeah. everybody. <laughs> I forgot. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to episode 43. 43. 43. Sushi san, right? A little practicing my Chinese numbers. That's right. Episode 43 of uh, China Tea Book. We're China Tea Book. Let's. I do have some housekeeping later, but I'm going to dive in regardless. <laughs> What okay. is China Tea Book? China Tea Book is where Jen and I take books, articles, or papers that are jam packed with great information about tea and tea culture. And we decode them because they're either not translated or they're translated uh, poorly. Or in this case, they're translated very well. There's just some stuff missing and they're so rich with information and so unknown. They mm -hmm. have to be shared. Hello, Lolo on YouTube. Hello, Delphine Shinkara. Oh, Delphine, haven't seen you in a long time. Sometimes I'm Dan. Oh, sometimes he's Dan. Oh. Anyway, hopefully you're welcome to uh, Instagram. We were watching Vikings the other day and they have a character named Half, Half Dan. Dan. So you should at least sometimes you're Dan. Maybe more than Half Edark. Edark. Welcome. Edark. Welcome as well. So anyway, Sunday Tea Book. Articles jam packed with great and They're either um, not available in English. There's still a bit left to be uh, improved in the translation. Well, today, we'll get to that in a minute. That's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Why do we translate it live? Why don't we just post the finished product on our blog or somewhere? And the reason for that is because you know, over my six and a half years working with Jen and working with Jen's mom, but mostly Jen, because or through, through Jen with Jen's mom, digging into the details and asking questions. Hello, Clifford Literal on YouTube. Digging in and asking the questions and sharing the process of why the words are used and why they're used in a certain way leads to so much learning about the culture of tea and Chinese tea, but also the culture of Chinese people, which gives you a lot of insight. It's just been very enriching in my personal toolbox to go through this experience. So we decided to share it with you. Dominique Harangi, welcome. Igor, welcome. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is, and that's what we're about to dive in. What have we got in store for you today? Of mm -hmm. course, Sunday tea, like I said. We've also <laughs> got tea trivia time coming up, uh, which I've got some great questions for you today. I'm super stoked about that. We've got... Number nine. So nine. I'm pretty happy about this. I haven't uh, had this tea oh, for a while. Oh, sound comes and goes. So... Sound comes and goes. Why? Ooh. Sound comes and goes. Sound problem? Let us know if everybody's having... Uh, everybody's mm -hmm. sound problems. Hmm. Let's check. Go check the mic. Okay, we're doing a mic check. So we did uh, the, uh, hello? Comes and goes, is that probably not the mic? I try to wire the mic differently. There is some pro, I guess. I'm I gonna don't just notch it up a bit further from our mouth now. Okay. Well, they can see mine on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Sound is failing. Okay, we have a, Sound is stuttering. Anyone else affected or is it me? Okay, thanks guys. Hi. We really appreciate that. And Delphine is on Instagram. Connection on Instagram is uh, unrelated. Sorry, we can't do uh, that. Yeah. But I will say, if you're on Instagram, okay, one thing I forgot about Sunday Tea Book is we will sometimes pull the document up on the screen, but not for Instagram, okay? We can't. Okay, that was, I decided to pull it up. <laughs> we can't do that on Instagram. So jump over to YouTube if you want to check out the whole is going to happen on YouTube. That's where Sunday Tea Book is going to happen on YouTube. So jump over to YouTube where we are currently working for sound issues shortly. Mm. So, um, let us know out there in YouTube land. Uh, oh, Fernanda thinks it is the internet. Boo. Ah. Oh, boo. Internet. Boo. Okay, well, we'll hope it just. All right, I'll move on to YouTube. Thanks. No problem. Now, back to Ying Home number nine. Yes, it's a black that uh, and many of our customers and uh, ours love because it just tastes so good. Mm. I don't know because. So during this episode, when we taste it, we would let you know why it's so good. And uh, we had a workout. I think. 
extra thirsty. I don't know. Pew Jen, I'm excited. Cool. Um, I was going to say something. Okay. Then. Uh, workout. I'm um, workout. Post workout. Yeah. So that's a. We try various things to make me not as uh, uh, sleepy during the live. So this week we try to work before uh, the live. Yeah, we'll but I think it was. We'll a good see one. how that works. I think it was a good one. Um, yeah, anyway, so today we will uh, tea in theory and practice. Uh, oh yeah, great paper. Mm. Uh, it's written uh, by Mr. Chuan and translated by Michael Salt, published in 1981 uh, in a French agricultural magazine. Translation was published in 1981. Yeah, so right. very interesting reading to compare the original vis-a-vis -vis the English professional translated one. Notice mm. there's a little clashes, a little mistakes in languages. And uh, difference, and also difference in understanding. Talking about time difference, how people mm, yeah. uh, understand tea in the seventies. We talk about tea in the seventies. The words, the term they use is quite different than nowadays, both in English and Chinese. And also because the translation was so great, it kind of uh, make us uh, um, uh, less alert when there's actually the cultural and uh, tea knowledge barrier. So there. Something missing in the translation uh, that uh, we'd like to kind of uh, share with you those uh, missing parts alive. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think not a crit like a criticize. Uh, this is not criticizing the translator. Done a good job, and uh, it's very professionally done. This we're just trying to add in something that uh, was. Because of I think a lot of times because of language, cultural difference, and uh, also if you just uh, hop in for a quick knowledge about uh, six T type T categories, what are they? We have a uh, uh, two videos on that. One is more of a beginner difference. Mm -hmm. A second one is a little more diving. This episode, on this section, we're more dedicated to a little. Uh, to dive in and expand our not about T classification or thing. What's the main difference? Pause for one second. I have okay. one. Everybody's throwing me ideas. Thank you for your ideas about what's going on with the sound. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. There's going to be maybe a pop. So give me a second. Okay. No, I don't. Go ahead. You okay. it is I think it's okay. in and out, and I wanted to so we'll see. Great, and I don't know if the workout definitely worked. Um, fire, yeah, that's great. All of those details are really great. I think it's great to acknowledge the translation is great. The undertaking was massive. Um, and it gave me some time to see. Thank you, thank you, uh, everybody, for your comments about. This. And it's still bad. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just because it's too close to this wire. Let's move it over here. I don't know. I'm gonna try some stuff. I hope what about I can. What the other it. end? Do you think we should try unplug and plug it? Uh, it end? doesn't make a difference. Okay. Um, vetoed. I got vetoed. It's become worse. Ah. Worse. Oh, yo, that's terrible. Terrible Let's news. do a reboot of the sound system. What do you think? Just turn everything off and back on? Uh, off and unplug and plug and on and stuff. Okay. Sure. I don't know. We're Moment gonna of silence. We're Everybody meditate. <laughs> we're going to try and fix the problem. So off. Oh, now it's good. So they're... Huh? Yeah, the, the 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 MacBook Pro mic is working well. Our our little don't system. touch it. Uh, <laughs> Dominic said, "Don't touch it." Yeah, I don't know. If you guys hear well, I think we will leave it for this episode. Maybe. Wait, wait a sec. We might have. 
Oh, it fixed it. It fixed it. We have lagging. lagging. Oh, do not fix a running system. Oh, that's right. It was the lag. All right. So we'll we'll go back. So I guess my reboot did work, and I was just too too quick. So let's try it again. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna get it back. I see what's going on. It was the. Okay, guys, it's been a while since we had a technical issue, so I'm not going to whine and complain. Smath, g, no, g, ro, g. It's good. All right, so let's wait a bit. I see Dominique's comment that it's good, but that's from, from the past because of the internet lag. Perfect sound now. We're still seeing perfect sound. Okay, great. So I wanted to say to the folks on Instagram, a few new folks popped in on Instagram. Don't know if they're still there, but Cha Chai T, welcome. Sweetest Stu, welcome. Longan. Logan Chick and Azim Akbani. If you want to enjoy Sunday Tea Book, you need to jump over to YouTube because we're about to end the Instagram side. Mm, yeah. You got to watch us have all the audio issues that you didn't actually catch because you're not on YouTube. So you're lucky you missed all that. Jump over to YouTube so you can catch Tea Trivia Time and the rest of Sunday Tea Book. I think I'll say goodbye. Yeah. We're brewing Ying Hong number nine. We do want to know what you're brewing, what's in your cup, mm. how does it taste? Chat amongst yourselves with tasting notes, share tasting notes while we're talking. We love that. We go back, we check them out. Uh, Clifford Little says, okie dokie folks, which I think is reference to the sound. I think okay. the sound is better. I'm gonna say goodbye to Instagram. Okay, see you in the YouTube side. Da -da 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 -da. End video. So much a sound effect. That was music, not sound effect. It's different. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, I gotta find a, <laughs> right? That was obviously a soundtrack. It's the same. same. Okay. Oh, I so, look so concentrated when I'm working on sound issues. Oh, too much concentration. Right, I feel like you were distracted. So the reason I wasn't talking nonstop is, was because he was oh, like a fixing a something. Job. So I was great like, job. okay, I'm just gonna keep talking. <laughs> oh, I didn't miss T3 or TTT. Yeah. T3? <laughs> Sounds so high end. We should say, eh? T cubed? Yeah, cubed. That was the word. Cubed. Anyway, so today we're brewing this. We put around... Ying uh, home number nine. Uh, super good. 5.6 grams. Oh, wow. You're precise. Mm. I was going to say five and a half, six grams. Just yeah. all perfect. I have a big guy one and two people for a while. So. And we're hoping to get lots of mileage out of it. Mm. Ooh, we got a Lolo having an Alishan Jing, Jing Swan Winter 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jubai, you did not miss tea time. Oh, I want to tell them about my impromptu live. So I've got a few housekeeping things that I said earlier. So I, Jubai Jia, you reminded me because you joined me yesterday for my impromptu live on the patio with the, uh, yep, yep. Uh, my impromptu live on the patio. It's my first time allowed to push the She was involved in the production. Monitor. <laughs> Most excellent. Uh, not monitor, um, remote. Yeah, so I just wanted to say, I'm, we're hoping, both of us, to. so yesterday it was just me goofing around, went live with my phone just to see how that works, how that worked, and it was like, okay, it's hard to see who's all there, and the comments kind of pop up and disappear, so it makes it uh, more cumbersome to interact, so we might just stick with the laptop when we're outside, mm. but I hope we'll be able to do more impromptu live. We're going to get out our clay kettle with the charcoal, which is often how we brew. It has two great aspects when brewing tea. One, the clay gives the water, a, it's a really slight difference, but it gives the water a bit of softness, a bit of uh, texture, something going on with that. But more importantly to me, at least, more importantly to me is the, um, the charcoal sometimes helps keep the bug away. <laughs> So I like that too. Um, Kuding, it's getting late in Hungary. Mm, Dominique Har Harangi is in Hungary. Oh, cool. If you're amenable to letting us know where you are, we'd love to hear where you're from. Uh, super, it's super exciting for us to be joined by people, you folks from all over the world who join us for Sunday Tea Book. Mm. And um, yeah. Oh. So let's dive into the tea for a moment. It's a really messy tea while you handle the dry leaf because it's full of those tea, uh, like the fuzz mm. of the hair. Like a, like a light brown sugar or a... Um... Fruity. For me, it was really Oh, not the aroma. Fruit. The color oh, of that, right, right, of right. the fuzz is yeah. like a light, a light, light brown sugar brown. I'm trying to remember the name of that fancy name for the darker sugar. 
but it's escaping me. Let me know if you can remember, like Starbucks calls it by that name because it sounds fancier. What? Oh, that's so such a nice, uh, like a datey fruity. It's a dry fruity mm. with that, uh, not roasty, but it's warming. Uh, mm. Very warming. Not quite roasty. And uh, Fernanda has some Kame, Kame Richa Kame. with sun-dried pineapple peels. Ooh. Pineapple, huh? pineapple peels. peels. Whoa. Okay, okay. I'm going to switch away from there. I'm going to yeah. go here and say, because I know Fernanda's on Discord, and if you can haul a piece of that pineapple peel out or grab a picture of it, We'd love to see it because yeah. that's fascinating and share it on our discord. I, uh, Fernanda is already on the discord, but if you're not on the discord, feel free to jump in. It's a great place to share uh, tasting notes with fellow tea lovers, um, all kinds of stuff, uh, pictures of tea. There's tea memes. There's all kinds of fun and crazy stuff going on there. I even want to get, try and go live on discord as well for just the Discord folks and have a bit of a tea session. I think that would be really fun. I've been saying it for a while, so I'm a little reticent to repeat myself, mm -hmm. but the uh, YouTube Live mobile thing was kind of part of that too, so. Mm. Oh, right. Oh, that's hot. I was a little bit fast. Psst, <laughs> burn my tongue. All right, it's gonna get quiet for a minute. Clifford Little's having a Darjeeling mm. uh, summer flush. Uh. This tea is kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a fusion, an east-west fusion tea. It captures the sweetness, some of those sweet elements of an eastern black tea and some of the bite of a western, Chinese western, a Yunnan black tea, like and yes. the best sides of both worlds. Really, really wonderful. All right, calming down a little bit. So I guess what calms me down is mostly tea. It's not. Yeah. Because now I don't want to talk. I just want to be here and stare in a space and just drink tea. Mm. <laughs> Let us know if you've tried Ying Home number nine, either mm. ours or any other kind. Um, oh, okay, here you go. Passing the phone over there. I need that for later read. Oh, right, you right. always put that at the farthest mm. corner. Yes, I always do. Mm. Lolo asks, what is the meaning of Ying Hong? So, um, Ying De Hong Cha. Ying De Hong Cha. Ying De is the place, Hong Cha means black tea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, short term, that's how Chinese have the abbreviation. What is, what is? Abbreviation. Abbreviation. Well, not, it's, not really <laughs> a, it's not really an abbreviation, though. Uh, kind of, I guess, but... Um, yeah, I guess. It's just a really small just one. We sometimes thing. do that. Somebody on uh, Discord asks, what does the number nine mean? And that is the, uh, I think it's an experimental tea, right? That's what we have in our, in our notes. Oh, who liked my reading in the, uh, the pre-roll? If you like that, raise your <laughs> hand, let me know. <laughs> so it's a, kind of some kind of experimental cultivar. Hmm. It's a, not a, as a, like a new or something. It has been for decades. I just love the sound of that, right? You yeah. think like it's kind of, but a, it's a very... it has orange or bright fluorescent mm -hmm. leaves or something. It's not so experimental. <laughs> yeah. We have an experimental farm here this in Ottawa. This gene comes from the Yunnan, uh, the, what's that called, like Peruar cultivar. Mm. So it does have that uh, little fruity, dried, uh, apricot, dry prune kind of taste in it. Mm -hmm. You really see more similarity to Yunnan black tea, like their home, mm -hmm. more than, say, um, Kimon or others. I'm going to do something crazy that I wouldn't normally do doing during Sunday tea book. What? There they are. That's the dried pineapple peel. She sent the picture already. We're checking it out right now, Fernanda. Thanks for sending it. So we can uh, see the dried orange peel. And yeah, the dried, yeah, it looks would like. Would that be astringent? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It looks okay, that looks interesting. It doesn't look like something you would eat after. Like the orange peel might infuse, you might might get chewable, I don't know. 
I don't know if I would eat that either. It just is so spiky. I wouldn't think of it if mm. you didn't uh, say right? that you were making a drink of it. Mm. Very cool. Already posted. I thought it was a love potion. Oh, Ying Hong. Mm. I think it is a kind of love potion because it's so lovely. All right, guys. <laughs> I think we can head on into you know where. You know where I'm going with this. I think you know. All right. That's right, folks. We're going over. All right, guys. It is tea trivia time. That's right. That's right. Crowd goes wild. All right, guys. In 15 seconds, we start tea trivia time. Tea trivia time is all about having fun. Take a guess. Go for it. Just have fun. Share your tasting notes. And it's going to be a good time. We always love tea trivia time. This one is going to be kind of focused on our current uh, document. So here we go. In tea classification in theory and practice, the document we're going over today, brown tea refers to, is it one, yellow tea? Is it two, dark tea? Is it three, oolong tea? Or is it four, any tea that has brown leaf? And I put and tea that has brown leaf, but I meant any tea. I always try and avoid the spelling mistakes, but it's pretty hard. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be any T. So, T so in the document we're going over, in, which is T classification in theory and practice, brown tea refers to one, yellow tea, two, dark tea. Just press the number and hit enter, and the magic computer will <laughs> calculate how many people got it right. All righty. And we're getting close. It says brewing your answers, but if you haven't submitted yet, you can quickly get it in and it might get, get uh, computed by our magical computer. Uh, Clifford Litter is coming in with a, a number one, yellow tea. Brown tea refers to yellow tea. Anybody else? We might have a little bit of lag. I'm glad we got the audio fixed. Lolo guesses mm. two, dark tea, good guess. Hmm. Igor guesses four, any tea, and... Good guess, everybody who guessed yellow tea. That is the correct answer. Jubaijia and Clifford. Uh, Jubaijia just under the wire with uh, number one yellow tea. So everywhere you see brown tea in the document, he is indeed referring to what we would now consider yellow tea. And it's funny because uh, Huang is Huang brown, or how did that happen? No, Huang, no, Chao. Huang is yellow. Mm, interesting. So just a translation. Oddity, I suppose. Mm. All right, guys. So way to go with your uh, submissions. We are on to question two, and I kind of didn't read it out. I got kind of stunned by the tea. So <sighs> relaxing. All right, it's another similar question. In tea classification, in theory and practice, black tea refers to, is it one, dark tea, two, yellow tea, three, western black tea, or four? Any tea with very dark leaf. So when he says black tea, does he mean dark tea? Does he mean yellow tea? Does he mean Western black tea? Or does he mean any tea with a very dark leaf? Igor coming in early with three Western black tea. I really love how Igor just gets out there and throws down the answers. Lolo follows up with Western black tea. Clifford Little guesses one dark tea. Fernanda comes in with number two yellow tea. And the correct answer is good job, Clifford. All by yourself, dark tea. Everybody else, great guesses. Good job. Oh, Jubaijia, a little bit uh, too late to get the uh, answer, but you got it right. Good job, everybody. Way to go. All right, I'm keeping on, on the topic. In tea classification in theory and practice, Shempuar is classified as, is it one, dark tea, two, green tea, three, white tea, or four? It's not classified by Chen Chuan's system at all. Mm. The uh, subsequent infusions are richening up, right? Mm -hmm. The sweetness is really coming through in this Ying Home number nine. Mm. Mm. It really shows the green, not green tea, sorry. The black tea, when you brew it, the leaf amount really 
affect the team. There's lots of lag today, yes. Mm. All right, guys, a few more moments to get your guesses in. Is Shempuar referring to dark tea? No, is Shempuar classified as dark tea, green tea, white tea, or it's not classified at all in the document? Clifford comes in with two. Fernanda says, aww. Jumadia <laughs> is four, not classified. Lolo says two green tea. Good guesses, everybody, good guesses. Let me turn on the clock since we're getting closer. Time is running out. Igor comes in with dark, uh, guessing number one, dark tea. And the answer is, way to go Clifford and Lolo, it is green tea. Shempuar is classified under Chen Chuan's system as a green tea. Couldn't be two or three, but not one. Very good. All right, guys, rocking and rolling. Uh, and another one about in tea classification and theory and practice. Blue tea refers to one, green tea <laughs> that has a bluish tinge. Is it two, shempuar, three, oolong tea, or four, any partially oxidized tea? In tea classification and theory and practice, blue tea refers to, and I'm going to encourage you guys to cheat a little bit. I should have said this earlier, but since right. we're getting close to going over the document, the link to the exact document is down below. That might help you if you kind of quickly read it. Chubaijia says, Qingta is not Bu Cha. Mm, that is right. Igor comes in with three, Clifford with three, both guessing oolong tea. Blue tea refers to oolong tea. A few more moments to get your uh, answers in, I can't remember if the guess is up top from Fernanda McMillan. Oh, Mac McMillan is here. Welcome to the stream. No super lag. Oh, Fernanda's missing her answers because of the lag. It seems the internet is struggling today, but uh, I'm not sure. The sound seems to be better. The lag is, we can deal with the lag. It makes it tough for you guys with tea trivia, but that's okay. You guys are sticking in there. Throw your answers down anyways. We count them as right. Way to go, Lolo, Igor, and Clifford. Three, blue tea does refer to number three, oolong tea, but good guesses, everybody. Way to throw yourself into oh, the I think mix. I know what Fernanda is saying by super lag. It's probably that's the answer for previous one or something. It like could that. be. That's what I think mm. is happening, yeah. And we're wrapping up, so a bit of a torturous, laggy tea trivia time for some of you. Final question, which tea blogger, shifting gears here, which tea blogger recently, on the 22nd of April, wrote, what makes East Asian teas unique? Was it one, Tea For Me Please, a blog by Nicole Wilson? Was it two, Tea and Spoons, a blog by Connie? Three, Steep Stories of the Lazy Literatus by Jeff Norman? Or was it four, The Teacup of Life by Luan Panuzio? All right, guys, switching gears to more of a blog. And this is related because I'll tell you a little bit after. I can't reveal too much because uh, I might give away the answer if I talk too much. So answers rolling in, time is running out. Which tea blogger recently wrote an article, what makes, <laughs> poor Fernanda, what makes East Asian teas unique? Fernanda, the TikTok is probably all out of sequence for you. I'm so sorry. Mac Millen goes for four teacup of life. Igor guesses two tea and spoons, Connie. Just throw down a guess guys, it doesn't matter. I will get to the, uh... <laughs> Fernanda says oolong tea, suffering from immense lag. And way to go, uh, Igor, tea and spoons, Connie, uh, a good friend of ours, Connie, recently wrote that article, What Makes It East Asian Teas Unique? Uh, that features Jen, uh, uh, Jen T, both of us, but I have to admit, Jen did all the work for that one. First, the leaderboard. Clifford Little, way to go. Four out of five right answers. Lolo, two. Igor, two right answers. And Jubai Jia, one right answer. You guys are all winners in my book. Oh, and I think Jubai Jia got a plus one because one of his answers came in late. So count yourself in the group with two right answers. Same with Fernanda. She, Fernanda she probably got from all right. the uh, technical they issue. They didn't even put her on the board. It's oh. so mean. Fernanda, you get, a, you get to be uh, the um, honorable mention because somehow the computer was being super mean to you. I just wanted to say though that um, uh, those bloggers that I mentioned are all uh, pretty fun tea blogs, worth checking out. Um, Connie 
wrote the What Makes uh, Southeast Asian Tea Unique. Gen Tea contributed to that, as did Sue from Sucha Tea and uh, Momo, Momo Tea. tea. Um, all great friends of ours. The interesting thing is Luan Panuzio is going to be on a series that Sue is doing called Tea Friends. Right, mm. which is she's coming up uh, in the middle of May. So check out uh, her webpage for details on that. We were just on it in the middle of April. Luann is going to be on it in the middle of May. Um, and there's some other link in there that I'm, oh, I wrote it down. I'm so smart. <laughs> mm. So yes, the, the blog featured Jen T. Momo. Oh, and Momo was the first guest of the Sue T. It's T. A big friends. So it's a big circle of friends up here. Mm. And, Get you a little bit dizzy though. And as we see here, all over the globe, uh, mm. a bunch of tea friends having a good time. But now it's time to dive into our nerdy tea fun with mm. tea classification in theory and practice. Yeah. So having a lot of lag. Yeah, I don't know. I think the lag will matter. It will matter for our interaction with the comments, but uh, it looks like we have a really good connection right now. I just think once we're lagged, it's hard to catch up. So bear with the lag, guys. I think now that tea trivia time is over, it will be less impactful. We will right. get around to your comments and they may be a little bit uh, coming in late, but we will still be looking at them. So do not worry. We will take care of you guys. Continue to comment about how delicious your tea is. Right. Ask us questions about the tea we're drinking. Ask us questions about what we're reading. Bad, bad internet. Bad, bad internet. Yeah. <laughs> if I could, I would spank it. I think it's related to the weather. Plus the lockdown, everybody inside and today mm. is raining. So mm. the bikers, walkers, everybody going inside and watch mm. YouTube. So mm. possible. <laughs> could be that or it could be because I'm charging my mouse. Just kidding. It's not, not it's for sure not because I'm charging my mouse. Are you sure? That was so random. Okay. You never know. Here's her. Here, okay, so Lolo's timestamp just came in at 19. Uh huh? Oh, wow. That's not. I don't know. Our timestamp is, is like 30. So I hope that's not fully right. But wow. If that's right, I don't even know what to say. You're like, you're not going to hear this for 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. What, yeah, We're back to the 40s. It takes a long time to travel. But if we're reading that, wouldn't anyway, that's gonna my brain's gonna explode trying to interpret how to read a timestamp that arrived here already after lag. Think about that for a moment. Psst. Brain freeze. <laughs> Woo, okay, let's go, let's do something okay. a little let's bit more fun do. called yeah. teeth classification. <laughs> yes, I'm not uh, good at the technology. I don't want to think about this. Uh, before we start, I just want to correct myself. Uh, thanks to uh, Thanks to Clifford, Clifford Little. Clifford. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sending us email. And I just want to correct myself. I think last week or the week before. Oh, good point. Just a couple of weeks before we talked about a cultivar variety varietal. So I I won't reinforce what I said was wrong. Let's just uh, stay with the, what's the right, right. way to uh, remember. So. Basically, according uh, uh, Clifford point out that uh, cultivar, no, sorry, it's a varietal, varietal. and variety. Mm -hmm. That's the difference is uh, say we're having in hole number nine. This one, the brood liquor is a varietal. Mm -hmm. What is the variety is the tea plant, in hole number nine plant. So mm -hmm. the leaf. Yes. And it's, uh, I guess, varietal is a stolen term from wine. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, thanks for the reading material you sent across, Clifford. So, uh, like, the varietal is in the bottle of wine. Yes. Um, so you'll say it's, uh, I, don't, I'm not, I don't know much about grape, but you'll say it's the, this grape varietal because the liquor in the bottle is yeah. the varietal. The variety is the grape itself. So yeah. the analog in tea is uh, the same. The liquor is the varietal. Anyway, I'm just repeating what you said. You said it perfectly. And thank you, Clifford, for pointing that out. I don't think we said variety once during that one because we're yeah, so, so... variety is the tea plant. Yeah. And so, so when... we talk about tea plants as a variety and mm -hmm. the cultivar. Yeah. And we okay. were talking about variety and cultivar, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm just used to use cultivar most of the time. Mm, right. So yes, that's a great one. And now I'll bring the document back up. And we can dive into, so just to get you guys, for those of you that have pulled it up, the link, if mm -hmm. you haven't, the link is down below. And again, you don't have to, you can just hang out. Mm -hmm. Oh yay, time signature MMA, missed TTT, holy diver. All right, let's do it. 
We love that song. Okay, you hit on one of her favorite songs with that reference. I just want to tell you that time signature. Nice shot. Holy Diver by the band Dio. If you haven't heard it, I recommend you check it out. Um, yeah, love that song. And I forget what I was going to say. Because I got so <laughs> sidetracked by that Holy Diver reference. Oh, time signature. I was going to, um, I was missing you. I was going to do a, a, a reference earlier and then I just forgot because you weren't here. But I'm so glad you're here. Okay, what was I saying was that the link to the document, stay focused, Phil, the link to the document is down below. You don't need to pull it up, but if you want, I think you'll get more out of it. If you're a teener, you'll absolutely love it. Grab the document from the link down below, and we are on page. If you look at the written pages, I'll scroll, I'll show you guys the document just quickly so you can um, get yourself set up. There we go. All right, so you can see there at page number uh, 337, we're actually starting on 336, just a little bit up. See, that's my green dot that tells me that's where we start. Green means go. I don't know what the red circle's for. Section four, okay? That's where we're gonna get started. So uh, I'm lost. I right. don't know why I go to the folder, but there's no note. Oh, I have it right so here. I, I, don't worry. Okay, I'll just follow your English version. You can follow the English or the... Uh, so, whoop, whoop. so just use the English version. I think that perfect. Work. Yeah. So the first paragraph was pretty great, actually. But you might want to paraphrase it. Um, right. So this. Uh, so today's this section we're gonna work on is uh, talking about uh, again <laughs> declassification, but it's a. Uh, um, how should I say? I want to say that this article contains different aspects. Like when he was a classifi as classifi classifying mm -hmm. T, he considered many different areas. It's not just a process, it also touches on different things. So in this section, he's going to talk about its changes. So, because sometimes when we talk about, oh, what's the T difference? This is oxidized, this is not oxidized, mm -hmm. this T is partially oxidized. So, what are we talking about? In this session, that's what he is gonna uh, explain in T classif in his uh, you know classification those differences in terms of oxidation, in terms of internal material substance change in T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to see. So for me, I really liked. I found the first paragraph was really uh, easy to read, and there was no real. Uh, other than um, he uses the namings that we talked about in tea trivia time, right? So you mm -hmm. just have to remember that if he says red teas, he means Western black teas. I think, I think a lot of tea people are now sort of very ac accustomed to understanding red tea, home cha, right. is also black tea and sorting that confusion out kind mm -hmm. of on the fly. Right. Um, and the, my favorite sentence, I think, is... Uh, right the, is the ending which is something we've always been keen on when people ask us about tea is mm -hmm. with the green teas right few chemical reactions take place with other categories uh and with black tea or home cha uh the the internal there's a big there's a large amount of internal change mm. and everything else is kind of in between so those are kind of the edges of the spectrum right i like that yeah. i like that way to think about tea yeah mm. And uh, in this section, actually in the whole article, whenever the translation called yellow alkyne uh, yeah. alcohol, now we, I don't know, maybe the old, at that time, because uh, in terms of tea science, there's also development. Maybe at that time, that's how they call it. I'm not sure, but now it's called yeah. uh, flavonoid. Yellow Fla alkane alcohols, yeah. Flavonoids. 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 I spelled it wrong here. Flavonoids. Okay, okay, it's O N, not A. Okay. My bad. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's you can just uh, change that whole term, yellow alkyl alcohol. Mm. It's flavonoids. And yeah, and even alcohols. Every now and then he shows. Yeah, it, it up shows to the alcohol, which is not uh, talking about alcohol. Alcohol is all talk about yeah. uh, flavonoids. Yeah, or down here he even says alkane alcohols. So in general, flavonoids, a large group yes. of substances that undergo change mm -hmm. in tea processing. Mm. So this, I don't know, I don't know if I should interrupt, but this well, is a uh, really interesting paragraph coming okay. up here. So there was a... I lost all my notes. Oh, here, here. So, no, it's okay. Just uh, stay with this one. Are, are these, 
Is this missing, or are these what they were, or did you have? They have it. Perfect. Is it helpful? Okay. Yes, the real <laughs> help. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you switch? Yeah. I need English version as well. Thanks. Um, so there is a teacher that was uh, getting a little bit uh, interestingly translated in this paragraph here. It's oh. talking about Let me go there. Uh, due to the climate, white tea undergo withering, blah, blah, blah. While blue tea becomes blue over a comparatively right. short term. Blue tea becomes blue. Not so, very helpful, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's a teacher. In Chinese, we call that zuo qing. So it's that oxidation phase during uh, oolong tea making. It's a special tea term. It, if you translate it word by word, it can be becoming blue. It can say making blue, which no, not blue, green. Uh, blue, I don't think it's a good, uh, good way to say oolong tea. It would be more of a green or some other alternative shades of green, not blue. Anyways, so that's a tea term. What it means is oxidation. So mm. kind of uh, in the same comparison with the withering with white tea while the oxidation right. phase with um, uh, oolong tea. Yeah, this paragraph is just rich with information, but the, it's like every sentence is so rich. But um, so I guess it would read better while blue teas become oxidized over a comparatively short time. Mm. Right. Mm. That would be a little... Um, better way to say that. Hence, mm -hmm. the changes due to the oxidation are greater in white tea. So, under these parameters, where white tea is withering longer, mm -hmm. the changes are more. Mm -hmm. This paragraph, right after that section, under the opposite conditions, the effects are less in white teas than in the blues. Right. Boom! It goes by so fast, I totally missed this the first time I read it. I mean, and I mean totally. The key in this area is not talking about the white tea process or oolong tea process. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know much about it. You don't have to dive into much about that. The key thing is about oxidi oxidation level and it changes. Like the, how long the oxidation level changes its, uh, um, how do I say, how long the oxidation step changes the oxidation levels. Mm. It affects it. Right. Short or long. It really... Right. So by, the, by this one quick sentence of under the opposite conditions, they mean that if the blue teas have a longer time mm -hmm. oxidizing than the white teas, um, you will have the opposite. Right? Mm. So I kind of tried to explain it over here in the comment. Mm -hmm. This explains that if the oolong has a longer time than the white mm -hmm. oxidizing, um, it, the oolong, will experience greater flavonoid changes. So the yes. flavonoid change is related to the amount of time oxidizing mm -hmm. is kind of the takeaway. Mm -hmm. There's another subtle takeaway, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's finish the paragraph. Uh, so later on, it talks about a wet vet and dry vet. Right. I'm going to keep it up because there's just a lot of yeah, specific it's pretty, references. Like, and a little bit confusing if you don't yeah if you don't know much about tea processing uh the translate as a web that's i think it's understandable it's a totally understandable for people who read it but on the other hand uh just uh, watch out a bit not to take that too literal about that uh, right it's not a huge container that's mm -hmm. not how the tea are made it's <clears throat> it's just more talking about the uh, the during different steps while the uh, the shupuar like the uh, dark tea process would add water to the tea to do the piling process while yellow tea processing doesn't add water for that but it doesn't mean yellow tea process are dry or something they also have a dry and wet as well so I don't want to dive too much into deep pro uh, tea processing right. details. I just uh, want to point out when uh, the translation talk about teas, uh, I think that he's trying to make sense for people who don't know much about tea to, mm -hmm. uh, to kind of make sense. Well, if you are trying to learn about tea process or thinking you can take what he said as, oh, that's how tea is processed. Uh, watch out because it's not mm. so you know 
Yeah, you know? I think you're right. I think it's he's in the in that middle ground where he his audience is T people, but it's they may tricky. Not, yeah they yes. may not have a deep understanding of every aspect. So he's speaking at a level of you he's you know some stuff, but you're not a beginner. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, yeah. So it's a tricky. So uh, just want to prevent people think oh so yellow tea are piled up in dry vats for a long period means uh, yellow tea oxidation is a uh, uh, dry version while if you talk about uh, yellow tea process there's also dry and wet version yeah as well. I think there's a couple of comments here that we can address too that are okay. they yeah. might be a little bit uh, they might be helpful so mm -hmm. Jubai Jia says while blue teas become blue equals while semi oxidized teas oxidize I think that would work too right mm -hmm. semi oxidized partially oxidized we can kind of split hairs on mm -hmm. how we say or oolong teas become oxidized. I think that also works. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's sort of what we were getting at. And then, um, and then Clifford talks about this, surely it's not the climate, it's the leaf bruising. If climate is replaced with bruising, we are spot on. No, nah, I think not quite, but I'll what? let you. What does that mean? Surely it's not the he climate. Doesn't, he thinks climate isn't the word, but I read climate as the correct word. Climate it, is the correct yes. word. So let's, and then Clifford suggests maybe it's it should a, be bruising, but I don't no, think that's no, right. That's right? not right. There's no bruising in the Why? Words. What decides the weathering, decides that uh, lens? A lot of times it's climate. climate He's right that climate right. is wrong. It should be weather because climate is the large scope in oh, English, but it should be right. due to the weather. You're right. Yes. So I will say that that, is, right. that would make that more weather. accurate. Okay. Climate is a little bit wrong. Right, right, right. Um, I'm not going to change it live, but notice ah. that, guys. That's a good catch, Clifford, but, it's, but bruising is not a good substitute here because uh, white tea doesn't... Uh, well, I don't know if that's... Well, in Chinese, said. it was not a... Like, a, it's right. a, it's totally nothing. okay. It right. wasn't like a weather right. or climate kind of a difference. Cool, but great so, comments and very yes, helpful. Yes, that's okay. a very uh, great comment. Holy guacamole, that's confusing. Fern <laughs> Fernanda's getting in <laughs> on the... She's getting the vibe, but we're She's getting in like... on the time signature vibe. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. We need that. Some whole, And holy guacamole is good. Mm. So keep all of this in mind as we dive into the next paragraph, because there's an right. element of the next paragraph that will that applies, I think, to the this paragraph too. Mm. So let's rock and roll. This is so interesting. So that, it's very confusing. I understand. Yeah, yeah. And guys, mm. if you're not so tea nerdy as us, and this is you're just like, why would I ever need to know about this to enjoy a cup of tea? You don't you're do right. You don't. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. Okay. You do not need to understand all of this. But there's a cool nugget coming up. There's a cool. <laughs> No, there's a cool gem coming up. I'm that, not supposed to laugh, right? No, you can laugh. That was okay. kind of goofy. Um, there's a there's a gem coming up. A little takeaway that you can just take away that as just a, a tea, uh, you know, having fun tasting tea, it will be useful. So hang in there. Um, okay. The next paragraph is going to get cool. And Jubajia agrees that weather is not climate. Mm, yeah, yeah so right. that was a little... Uh, where we are in black tea, the maximum reduction in... Oh, yes. Next yeah. paragraph. Also very confusing. Yeah, yeah. The next the, paragraph is so crazy full how, of numbers. How okay. It? The confusing thing is how people read and think about mm. that is quite different. Mm. Okay. The key, I think the key information in this paragraph, which you can ignore all the numbers, is as the processing methods differ, so do the changes in the in the flavonoids. So do the types of changes in the flavonoids, right? Like, or just what you said. Changes. Mm. So do the changes. Mm. So he uses ah. a black tea and a yellow tea. Black tea means dark tea here. Yeah. Okay, so it's a dark tea and yellow tea. Yeah, really helpful in this one. Mm. It might be helpful to cross them out and write them in because it's going to get zigzag. Yes. <laughs> Even <laughs> so dark tea and yellow tea. So he lists the... Uh, the reduction of uh, its uh, let me read it polyphenol levo rotatory tannic phenols. Okay, you don't need to take you don't need to remember that to enjoy tea. Yeah, I don't know about uh, English uh, in terms of uh, the chemical name. In Chinese, the tea name has some change. A tea uh, chemical name has some changes throughout time as they discover more. Uh, chemical or more strictly like a left uh, or right and stuff like that they have evolved to mm. old times the way uh, we call certain things in Chinese it has changed so it was really hard for me to figure out mm. what he's saying right. in his original one so what the six 
70s uh, T chemical turns are slightly different mm. than today. Uh, so I don't know if that also happens here, but all those are fancy, hard so. to understand chemical names are various types of uh, T polyphenols. And throughout the process, it's re reduced a lot. So before we dive in, just want to say uh, if some of you are really into health to say all oh, those teas really reduce the T polyphenols and those are really healthy things. And don't worry, they're not just a gong gong, they transform to other things. So there are other new uh, anti strong, uh, potent antioxidant forming during the process. Mm. It's not straight up a minus. It's uh, right. Some oh, yeah, minus, that's a good some point. add, some, it's a change, it's not a That's right. There's sort of a faction negative, out there that believes uh, green tea is the best. And yeah, uh, if yeah. you process the tea, you lose a lot of the health benefits. And uh, you don't necessarily lose them. You change the type of health benefit you get. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, that's a great point. So, um, in terms of the data, so what it shows is... The data. <laughs> uh, anyway, it just shows uh, the reduction rate which in dark tea it reduced a lot right and a lot. in yellow tea re reduced less less right that's the key point mm -hmm. and you can see it's a space it's a bracket of how mm -hmm. much it reduced it's not a straight one number right so what points out is uh, besides it says the difference in processes it means not only in dark tea and yellow tea process Within yellow tea categories, there are different process. Mm -hmm. That's I think one of the reason I don't want to talk. Uh, I don't like. Uh, I I said that many many times. I don't like a uh, chart. I don't like tea processing chart. Tea processing flow chart that make me people look at that and say that's how green tea is processed. And think if they see one type of green tea process, they feel like. Okay, that's how every green tea is processed like that. It's not true. Different regions, different area, different cultivars, so they have all different uh, ways of processing green teas. Mm. Same with the dark tea, yellow tea, black tea. So um, that's why that number is they have maximum reduction, they have minimum reduction, and those variants are depending yeah. on the specific yellow tea or dark tea process. Yeah. So the, I've highlighted there that the nugget. And for me, this was really key because like she says, we, we interpreted the numbers differently, right? She focused on sort of the, the I think what is really intended that the dark tea more, yellow tea less, but there's some overlap. For me, I saw the amount of overlap and I was like, whoa, what overlap? But the, actually the key to me that I think is useful for all tea lovers, because we're we're really down in the weeds now. We're really into the details. We're talking mm -hmm. about chemicals and percentage of uh, percentage of reduction or oxidation and all of this stuff. But what do we see when we're kind of getting into tea, right? We see charts with processes mm -hmm. to kind of simplify the charts. And it's easy, A, what you, exactly what you said. Just mm -hmm. because green tea has whatever, let's say it's five, I don't even know off by heart, or white tea has three simple steps. Those steps from one white tea A to white tea B to white tea C or by producer A or B or C are slightly different and that matters. And those same step might appear in green tea as in dark tea. For example, kill green. It's a step in both teas. Those are not the same process at all. They're both serving that general kill green function. So it's good to remember as a tea uh, hobbyist or as a tea lover or a tea connoisseur, a tea mm -hmm. person who just enjoys tea. Just remember, those are generalities. The, the producer, even the producer from year A to year B, the process is different. It's right down to the details, yes. right? And in reality, it's not so statistically uh, hygienic, right? Because we talk about... Sorry, say that again. Statistically hygienic? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that's the word of the day today. Win. <laughs> no, because people talk about black tea and we say it's a fully oxidized right. tea. Does that mean it's a fully oxidized? No, there are tons of uh, right. uh, black tea that doesn't fully oxidize because it's in reality it's controlled on by the tea producers, right? And you will see that mm. if it's not down to the perfection, you will have more bitterness, you will have mm -hmm. more astringent. You brew mm -hmm. the leaves, you see more greenness. There is yes. a... Yes. 
it's uh, a certain point we just cannot say because black tea is fully oxidized we're expecting every black tea we see in the market or stuff to be statistically a hundred percent oxidized in leaf to be mean like fully red or stuff right right okay? yeah yeah, really. I, so I felt like that was after all of those. And back in the other paragraph, we were talking about uh, white tea and oolong and how those changes are uh, different. Um, and if you flip the times, the, uh, the, you know, the amount of oxidation goes with the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, different kind of oxidation. Like it's mm -hmm. still oxidation, but the details are different. Mm. You'll never oxidize a white tea uh, long enough and suddenly it tastes like oolong. No, right? Okay. Gotta check with the boss, make sure Good I don't job. misspeak. Okay, cool. So we're cruising right along here. Let's uh, let's check out some comments here. Uh -huh. So time signature says, I'm a linguist. I don't know anything about biochemistry or climatology. Mm -hmm. Us neither. We're not linguists uh -huh. though. But uh, I don't know. Linguist is such a great um, field. It's... Yeah, I have a quite a silly question. Mm. Is, do you have to choose which language you study as a linguist or is that generic that you would study that's a great question, across actually. the board? Yeah, huh? that's a great question. I think I don't think it's silly. Oh. It's uh, like, do you focus in on, let's say, uh, Latin based languages as a group or do you do it by group like that maybe? Or um, the inter the way they I don't know. That's a great question. Um, so there you go, time signature. Anyway, it's a cool thing. Let me Star Trekify that. I'm a linguist, not a climatologist. No, you got if it's time signature. <laughs> if you want to Star Trekify it, you got to say, "God damn it, Jim! I'm a linguist, not a climatologist." <laughs> sort of like that. Okay. But anyway, really good, really good. Um, I think you should expand from the Batman into the Star Trekification as well. All right. So being a little bit silly, keeping it light and fun. Um, Oh, and Clifford talked about a little bit about the L and D versions. When he brought that up about the Lavo mm. and the Dextro, I totally, I didn't read that as L and D, yeah. but that reminds me there's a lot of these compounds have L and D varieties. I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with uh, the one that we talked about in this one, which was, oh, he's not kind of just tannic phenols, but I'm familiar with L-theanine and I think there's a, there's a D-theanine as well. Mm. Um, but we don't see that in uh, tea as far as I know. Again, I'm mm -hmm. not a biochemist. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we're getting on to the, uh, I, know, I, I couldn't find my mouse wheel suddenly. Oh, the closing. So again, if this, in the little section we picked off for today, uh -huh. so we're going to uh, go into one more paragraph, which kind of sums up a little bit of the begin, the intro. Yep. But if you were going to read the first paragraph of section four and this paragraph, I think you'll walk away with the gist, with the overall idea intact right mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna read the first sentence because I think it's uh, no that's not the sentence I wanted to read forget about it <laughs> that's so funny though I was like oh which sentence I was waiting anyway actually no the whole paragraph I strongly <laughs> recommend right. everybody read the this paragraph right uh, let me show them uh, I prefer to go uh, it's gonna be the transition haven't done that in a while so give this paragraph a read Read it out loud to yourself. It's really, uh, it's delightful. And it really sums it up, right? So basically, can I sum it up? I think I can yeah, do a decent job. Basically, he says that uh, the T classification system that's based on process and on the way it evolved in the field matches, it matches the uh, flavonoid content. It maps up with the chemistry, right? That's where we get six our six categories. And he names them. And the order in which the categories are given here, mm -hmm. the way he listed them, preserves mm -hmm. uh, preserves the, uh, what does he say? Given, preserves the Scientific. scientifically popular names created from, that came out of the field. So mm -hmm. it's already widely accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the qualities, the T characteristics mm -hmm. are easily distinguished between them. Um, in addition, it follows the principle of steady progression from simple green to mm -hmm. complex mm -hmm. uh, black mm -hmm. and um, and also matches the internal changes from simple to complex few mm -hmm. to many listen to this this is great this regularity this smooth development reinforces the systematic and scientific character 
of the categorization. Bang! Buttons it up. <laughs> Doesn't that button it up nicely? Yes. This paragraph is a Klingon. <laughs> Klingon. Does that mean it sticks to the wall or does that mean it's going to uh, shoot you if you dishonor it? Or no, battle you. They wouldn't shoot you. They would fight you with those crazy blades they have. <laughs> this paragraph is dead, Jim. This paragraph rocks. Come on, this was a great paragraph. So that is... Um, that's sort of where, so we to dive into all those details about how the oxidation progresses uh, and so on was basically to reinforce the classification system mm. that there, that I think the existing names that had existed there, yeah. they work, they just need sorting, right? That's right. So that's one of the, I think, um, mm, how should I say? I like to repeat that multiple times to remind mm. people who might be just joining us or new to the topic or stuff. Though this is an article on T classification. He didn't create those names. Mm. Right. He used the beforehand, there's a rough, okay, there are different types of T. Things are more loose and people already mm. Mm. You know, like working people, like from the field, people already have those terms and roughly using those, but the boundaries are blurry, right? It's, uh, that's why there are maybe called mistakes of classify this T to this group or right. stuff, but people are already using that. He's yeah. not uh, inventing something out of the yeah. lab and, and it wasn't say totally. that everybody going to use these terms. Right. Rather, he put what's already in use organize them a little bit, re that also makes importance for that. Besides all the scientific reasons, it makes it easy to make those terms be used by people. You know, it's easier to, uh, you know, adjusting existing uh, knowledge a little bit or using the existing terms that introduce people in right. that, and those are right. farmers and working class, yeah. you know, to rather than just introduce a total new fancy yes. scientific name that they were like, okay, what? We're not going to use that. We heard that and now yes. let's uh, go back to the old style. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Jibai Jia uh, has a, makes a point that's interesting. He says, so his system is biochemical, not process division. Actually, not quite. He's more interested in a system that is both all of those and more. It's biochemical. Mm -hmm. It is uh, process based. It is uh, uh, so he's he's look. It is characteristics of the tea flavor, aroma, Flight, liquor color, yes. leaf, and all of those things are tied together. They cannot be separated. And the root is process. And the root is process. Yes. Right. Because the process of Does that make sense? is a, I think that makes sense. Let us know if that sense. makes sense. Because <laughs> how you process it leads mm -hmm. to the biochemical change, leads to the character of the brood leaf, yeah. the dry leaf, the, the liquor, the taste. The right? look so, even. And yes. the look, yeah. So that's sort of where... And that's why when we uh, have... Qualitative uh, becomes quantitative. <laughs> that's why when people simplify what's the difference between mm. six T category, it's not a chemical or or mm. look or something is still process. It has a good reason. We're not doing mm. this uh, kind of videos to say, oh, it's not because of process. Mm. We're saying, yes, process, but there's more. It's not just process. And that's why there's a yellow mm. tea who goes through yellow in process and cannot be called as yellow tea because it also doesn't fit in other things. Right. So process is not the only one, though that's it's right. the major one. It's got, I don't want to open a can of worms because I think we're at a really nice spot to close up, but it reminds me of one of Sue's questions during my tea chat with her, my tea friends chat with her. Mm -hmm. What is the, it was something like, what is the biggest misunderstanding mm -hmm. about uh, Chinese tea? And uh, for me, it was that, that the, the, you know, the thought and there's a thought in Western tea that, you know, if I like it, it's good. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it was the fact that there is an objective standard with Chinese tea. And actually this classification system laid the groundwork for that mm -hmm. standardization. How do you say that this home cha is better than that home cha? Why? It's the amalgamation of the gardening, the processing, the flavor, mm -hmm. everything. So that is cool. I'll keep it short and sweet. Mm. 
Clifford Little says, well explained, Phil, process manipulates biochemistry. Yes, that modification of biochemical content. Yes, basically everything depends on the process. Yes, that's the pillar. Mm. That that's is the pillar. We, no, that is the base. That's uh, why we say that 90%, 95% of what we taste is the process. Okay. Uh. Lolo said a comment, and I've got to do a shameless plug. Okay, Lolo? Lolo says, it would be interesting to choose two varieties, leaves slash plant. Process it the same way and compare. Two oh. So I think I was just thinking I was going to promote our one of our tea master, but he kind of turned it around a little bit dark. Why? Two leaves. So we have we have the same. We have different. What did he say? Two varieties. Oh no, the oolong master is that. Yes. It is that. So check out the oolong master. It is different varieties of tea. Mm -hmm. Um. But they're not quite processed perfectly the same, right? They're processed by the same, pro same producer. producer. The tricky thing with this is there are so many differences. Shui Xian, my Shui Xian, and your Shui Xian, they could be quite very different in taste because they might not be grown in the same uh, region, processed differently, or that's, that's a great one. <laughs> that's a great... What? Clifford's suggestion is a really great one too. Just go buy a super cheap Longjing. He, I added the super <laughs> and an expensive one and you're done. <laughs> this is pretty close though. That's a pretty good way to really pull the differences apart. So it's, you don't have to be overly, I think at a certain point you don't have to be overly like, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, cautious about uh, eliminate all the variants. Mm, it's right, really right. hard. Even with uh, uh, our true. collection or stuff, you know, when we go uh, taste teas and producers, we taste different batches of the same day or different days, same producer, same garden, same as much as possible, but there's still difference. So yeah. even though uh, you could have two uh, cultivars, there's still the, the or same producers, they yeah. still have, you know, better days and worse days yeah. or yeah. stuff like that. But in general, you will be able to taste the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, guys. So mm -hmm. um, this tea is going strong. I think we, uh, we hit the leaf amount. I was going to say, though the leaf amount is totally fine for two people to brew, uh, like to sip, I don't think it's the perfect. That's It's a little bit boss, right? It's a little bit because we have two Here, people, it, we have a little bit. Let's test out the brew okay. can. We Just have stress a, it out. Good. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Thanks. And we have... Oh, right? wow, that's so pretty. But so, then you moved. Oh, oh here, here. So I want to show you the ratio. So even though I can say uh, I brew quicker to minimize mm. it becomes strong, but this is not the best way to brew black tea. Mm. It needs the time. When I get the mm. liquor right, because I put too much uh, uh, leaf in it, the most feel is not there. It's not mm. thick enough as I Because it's like. coming out quicker. Yeah, if yeah. I let it yeah. sit longer, it's going to be too strong. So when brewing a tea, there is a kind of a Sweet ideal. Spot. Yes, yeah, sweet spot of the ratio. Uh, but of course, we can always adjust a little bit to make that work. Anyway. And you did a great job. Did I? Yeah, yeah, the, the brew is great. But uh, you're right, like it's, it, you got to be in and out so quick, but you did a great job. It's really, uh, the sweetness is preserved. It's no bitterness, no astringency. A little bit uh, thinner than I liked. Yeah. I would like to give it a little bit longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was so busy. Um, oh, Fernandez says, wow, lovely leaves with the leaf emoji. And wudong, still don't get it. Wubudong, wubudong. Oh, still don't get it. Oh. No. Oh. Okay. Well, don't understand people sometimes either. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Then that's why. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we can uh, we can pick this up anywhere. Sweet spot of the ratio. That's a cool term. Of the ration. Yes. Yes, ratio. Oh, it was ratio. He got yeah, auto-corrected. Awesome. Okay, okay cool. guys. So tune in next week. We're going to continue. We are getting close. Can we talk about that? We gotta, we're getting close. We're in section four. Oh, more. we're getting oh, close right. to the end of this document. It has been great. So, uh, you know, we're always open to uh, taking your comments and thoughts about what should be next. Um, you can throw them on Discord. You can throw them up on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Is where we hang out and also on the Discord. Mm -hmm. um, let us know if there's a tea document you'd like us to, to uh, dig into. We'd love to hear what you guys are seeing out there and what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um,
book paper article. We're pretty flexible. Uh, we'll be back next week and uh, yeah, lots of more videos and a cool announcement coming up. So as we get into more of the patio impromptu lives, I'm excited to get back to oh. the impromptu. I was like, what? What was cool? I was like... Well, we've got a cool announcement coming up and I, I kind of talked about it yesterday on my impromptu live, but I'm not going to talk too much about it, but we do have a cool announcement. I hope I will be notified. <laughs> she will be notified. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Fun again. See you. Bye. <laughs> so drink tea and listen to Dio. Yes, we oh, will do that right away. We would use it as our outro music, but guess what? We would get copyright hit. So we won't use it for our outro music, but we will say uh, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.